I'm Gary, and we are joined by the Prime Minister, John Key, in the studio. Uh, so, Prime Minister, again, thank you so much for your time. You've been very generous with it. I wonder, with your children, now you've got teenagers, haven't you? I do. And two, is that right? Correct. Stephanie's uh, 17 and Max is 15. Do they? I know I've got four kids, and particularly the elder ones, the teenagers, you know, they yeah, get... And from time to time you forget two of them, like you did yesterday when you were supposed to pick them up from school and you left them behind. I forgot two kids, Prime Minister, right. but it's easy to mistake. Nice. I've got a lot of them. So, but, so, but, you know, they lovely. lovely. I adore them with all my heart, as I'm sure you do with yours. But at the teenage years, it's it's kind of like a very crucial time. Do you do they actually have a problem with your job, honestly? Do they sometimes say to your dad, we so wish you weren't this dude? Yeah, oh, I, hell yeah. yeah. No, no, the, it's, it's, it's kind of cool when you're 12, yeah. and probably not bad when you're 20, but when you're uh, 16 and yeah. dad's prime minister, it's not that great. We went, I remember one night, actually, I said, Steffi went to a party. We, had, we were quite strict on ourselves. Like, oh, well, you can go to these odd things all the time but we will drop you off and we'll pick you up yeah so anyway she sent me a text said, you know, I've got to get picked up at 12 o'clock or something so I said yeah that's fine and she said you make sure you're quite a long way away I don't want those police anywhere near me because you know it freaks them out when the police turn up to be, pick them up so the police are in this, in this undercover car and I'm in, I'm in our car driving it so that's fine so it's midnight and we're out the front and um, and she's starting to walk along all these people there no one's really looking at it. the stage it's all fine except quite completely 100% by accident I swear to god the police officer <laughs> leans on the siren thing well oh, all the bells the siren the whole thing's going off she's got in the car slammed the door said I'm not I'm, a, I'm so not talking to you I'm not talking to you get me home that was it now, I think that is about a month later, she emerged from the... That is... The, uh, but it was, it was really by accident. The whole thing just lit up and... Oh, God. It's this is, I guess the corollary to that is, in terms of their security, without going into details for obvious reasons, do you have to think about their security as well now with your advisors? Uh... Yeah, a little bit, but not overly. And, you know, we've, we've largely tried to keep them out of the public domain. So for a long time they weren't um, in the media, there weren't pictures of them and things. And, what, look, in the end, what, what happened, and the reason for that wasn't that we're not hugely proud of them, but, and everyone knows that we have children, and I talk about them all the time, but in the end it's, you know, they're running their own lives, and I didn't, I didn't you know, they are very special to me, and I didn't want people to think, you know, or they, them to think that they were part of a political exercise. So we kept them out of that. But when the 2008 election came along and, and we won, Brona and I sat down and said, look, we've got a choice here. We either bring them up on the stage with us. If we do that, those shots will be there forever. And they are, and they have been used. Mm. And there was one in the Herald off that night mm. yesterday in Auckland. So you've got to accept that. But on the other side of the coin, we just sat back and said, look, in a few years' time when they're growing up, um, they're going to look back and say, you know, in any, anyone's life, that was a pretty special night for us as a family. And would you really not have them there because there's going to be a few media shots of them? So then we did it. And I still think it was the best thing. i never forget the look on Max's face, who would have been at the time about 13. And he was, before we went there, I said, mate, you're going to be OK. We're going up on the stage. There'll be a lot of people, there'll be a lot of cameras and a lot of noise there. And he goes, oh, this is going to be so easy. No problem. To get on the stage. There were 100 media there for a start. So there were literally 50 TV cameras. There were snappers from all over the world. There's stuff every going. I just looked at his face and it was like, he was looking down the window. Tunnel, and a seven, seven, was, seven was coming out. I was like, You okay? Brilliant. I'm glad we did it. A couple of quick, couple of quick fire, fire questions, questions to finish. Do you still enjoy being Prime Minister? Love it. Still fun. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What, what are, you are you most grateful for in your, for in your life? My mother. My mother. Oh, what a lovely, oh, what a lovely answer. answer. Yeah, my mother. What was the, what was the warmest welcome, welcome you've ever received? Well, funny enough, we were talking about yesterday, very quick answer was, the you know, the day when we won the election, there were two really amazing things happened. That, that night, we came out of the house, and, we, and we, I didn't know this, but there were three or four hundred people in the street I live in, in Auckland, and they were just celebrating, and, were, and the neighbours were pouring drinks out. I don't know what the liquor laws are like in my street, but obviously quite liberal. So people were sort of drinking, about, and as we drove into town, there were just people lined up all the way through Auckland, just waving and stuff, and on the Monday morning when I got off the plane in Wellington so we were coming in to put together the deal but everyone knew we'd won. People just stopped in the entire Wellington airport all the way down from the, you know, everything from the Hertz right at the bottom, you know, to the car, right to the coffee shop and they all just clapped and applauded. It was yeah. just yeah, a really lovely nice. thing. It was that, really it's lovely a welcome. really nice story. Yeah. And it was just spontaneous. It was, you know. what a, what's, what's the best thing you remember about your youth? 
Sorry about my. Um, I think, in a, way, I think in, a being, in a way, being at university it was a really, fun, really fun time for me, and um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. And the most, and the most interesting, interesting person you've ever met. Well, well, people are going to be really surprised by this, but um, George W. Bush. Why? Why? He is so different to what the public he's thinks. Really he's really bright. Um, he's quite, um, quite self-well self, you know, aware. Well aware. And he was just... He was just I, I had... I saw him. I'll tell you what happened with him. I, I've met him on a couple of occasions. And then I went to speak in China when I was Prime Minister last year and he had, was no longer President. And he was down the road. And I, I said to them, um, look, you know, I, I want to go and um, see President Bush because I, I sent a message to him that I want to come and say hello. And he said, yeah, it'd be great to see you. And anyway, the Chinese said, no, no, you can't go because, you know, you're speaking, I was speaking with Hu Jintao, so, or Wen Jiabao, actually. So they said, look, you know, you can't, you can't be late for the, the premier. And I said, well, look, I've got an hour and a half spare. I'm not going to be late. It's 12 minutes down the road and we've got a motorcade and there's no road. There's no cars. So, it's, so anyway, after this massive row with the Chinese security, we eventually went down there. And I turned up and um, I remember he came out to me and he shook hands. He said, he, he, he said, and there was literally him and one security guy and I had quite a number of people with me. And he said, it's so nice of you to come see me. People don't come see me anymore. And, uh, oh, I said, really? And, but he sat down for half an hour and told me what was in his book. He's wow. releasing. And yeah. he just went through all these different stories about what happened and it was incredibly fascinating. So he, he was, and the only other person I'd say that, at risk of name dropping is the Queen, who is a lovely, lovely lady, really, and so aware of New Zealand. She she follows New Zealand. She understands the issues in New Zealand. She really, she really is very affectionate about New Zealand. What an amazing life you've got! And finally, from us, what would you like to be remembered for as Prime Minister? What do you hope your legacy is? Well, for me personally, um, there are two things. One is definitely economic performance, and it's not that we're fixated with money, but money gives people security and choices. And so for us, I want people to have jobs and, and do well. And the, second, and the thing second thing is, I think, I think um, ultimately, ultimately trying, to trying to get race relations to a new and improved well, level. I don't think they're bad in New Zealand at all. But ultimately, but ultimately we're a country of 4.4 million people and we've just got to get on and, and tackle the issues around the world. And I think, you know, there is there are, there are issues we have to deal with and, and I understand that they challenge people and sometimes people get a bit grumpy with me when I do some of those things, but they're all about a process to get us to go together, you know, hand in hand really. Well, very, very very good. John, we've really loved talking with you. Thank you so much for your time, Prime Minister. Very, very informative and just really good fun. Thanks Thanks so much. Prime Minister John Key, would you make sign Gary? This is more FM. You were quite right.